Hey folks, Adam Dupay here, and today we're going to be looking at the Ponable.kr challenge flag. So this is an interesting challenge, and it's definitely one that's outside of my wheelhouse. This is uh, this is going to be a little bit more of a walkthrough because I've already solved this challenge, but the actual solving of it took me a lot longer. So uh, let's dive right in. So the flag, we can see it's worth seven points, so this means it's probably more difficult than ones we've seen so far. And let's see, it says, Papa brought me a packed present. Let's open it. Download the executable here. And interesting, and the next line actually goes to further this, but it's clear it says, I mean, there's no SSH. It's not saying this is running anywhere. This is saying that this is a reversing task. All you need is the binary. So how should we as CTFers look at this? This means that the flag is somehow hidden inside this binary and we'll need to figure out a way to extract that binary and that extract the flag just from the binary. So uh, I already have it here. Um, so whenever I'm faced with any kind of reversing task like this, I first want to understand as much as I can about this binary. And really what you're doing here is you're just trying to, the goal here is to just trying to get more information as much as you can about what is this binary and what does it do. And so the first thing I always run is the file command on any type of unknown binary. This is a very good habit to get into uh, on any type of CTF challenge is just what, what are you looking at? And it's important to know about how file works. So if you don't know how it works, read the man page. Uh, basically it's reading the magic bytes of the file and telling you information about it. So here we can see that flag is an ELF 64-bit executable. It's been statically linked, which means that libc, everything is all contained within flag, which should mean that it's a pretty large uh, 328k, um, so it's a pretty large binary. And we know that it's been stripped, so this means it won't have any nice debugging symbols. Also interesting in terms of thinking about the idea behind this ponable.kr, here's our first uh, look at a challenge without C code. So we're going to have to be exercising our uh, reverse engineering and our uh, those type of muscles. So uh, the first thing I always run is flag. And the next thing I always run is strings. So strings, um, if we look at the man page, it uh, basically is incredibly simple. It just scans through the, the file and it looks for ASCII strings of a, a minimum of a certain length. So it just looks for... ASCII characters, I think th uh, at least four characters long, or an option, and we'll show it to you. So I love running strings on a binary because it uh, tells me, it, it, it lets me know. So what you'll see is you'll see a lot of the UI elements will be strings in this um, in the binary that come out. And what you can do is you can look for that in the program so you can kind of get a feel for what the program does without even running it. So. Uh, strings here, um, let's see, so you just kind of have to take this um, with a grain of salt. You're really just trying to get a feel for what's here. I just kind of spaced through it and yeah, we got a lot of weird stuff in here. Um, I'm not trying to read everything, I'm just trying to let my eyes a little bit relax and just kind of like see if anything pops out at us. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so nothing right away. Ooh, let's see. Hmm, var temp. These could be stuff from libc, so we have to be careful about not, you know, having um, too many. Preload, yeah, a lot of these are probably the linker. Um, libc, that sort of thing. So I think we may have hit the usefulness here. Oh, that looks like to be some text. Ah, interesting. Uh, proc exec, proc write fail. Interesting thing here, info, this file was packed with the UPX executable packer. Hmm. 
Uh, one thing to look for once we run strings, look for flag. And maybe see if we see anything. I mean, the other thing, we know there's been a lot of um, smiley faces. So search for smiley faces, see if there's anything in there. And presumably there's not. I mean, but you always want to, you never know. I mean, this comes up in CTF challenges sometimes with forensics where they give you some TCP dump or some kind of crazy dump. And honestly, a lot of times you can solve that just by grepping for the words flag. Okay, so that didn't show us anything. So it looks like this UPX thing is interesting. Um, so it's some kind of packer and a packer, uh, what it essentially does is a packer will go in and um, you'll give it your binary and it will take that and pack it and basically dynamically unpack it at runtime with all kinds of crazy obfuscation tricks. Um, so this seems to be rather than necessarily a uh, static reverse engineering where you have the binary itself and it's just complicated. Um, it looks like we may have to do some dynamic stuff here. So let's, so the next thing I do, so I run file, I run strings, and then I execute it to see what it does. Um, so here we see it outputs, I will malloc and string copy the flag there, take it. Interesting. And the other interesting thing is if we pop this through uh, the flag. So we actually do not see this string anywhere in the program. Um, and so presumably, so it's telling us that it's going to malloc the code and then it's going to try to string copy the flag there. So the other thing I always like to do is to run the binary under ltrace. So ltrace will hook all of the libc calls that will give you all of the uh, libc calls that the binary is making. Um, so I can run ltrace and uh, oh, that's the wrong way. So it says it can't find dynamic symbols or dynamic strings. And here this actually makes sense if we remember, um, if I had remembered, oh, of course this, this um, the binary is statically linked. So it's not using the dynamic system call. So we can't use, um, S L trace on a statically linked binary, but we can use S trace. So we can see the first thing that happens is uh, exec the E. So this is our shell executing this. It does some memory mappings. It then reads the link to slash proc self exe, which is interesting. Um, it then is calling M map. So we could try to figure out what all these calls are. Um, it's calling mprotect on this memory region at, what is this, 400,000. It calls nmap again, it calls mprotect again with this 6c1, um, calls nmap, munmap, that's interesting, unmap stuff. It calls uname to get the uname, that's interesting. Uh, it calls BRK, so presumably this is the call to malloc, so it's telling us that it's going to call malloc and it's going to copy the string there. And we can actually, so uh, BRK is what's used, so malloc um, is a libc function, and malloc calls BRK to actually allocate heap memory from the, um, the operating system. So you can look up the man pages for all of these fun things to learn more about that. Um, then it calls arc protect arch set fs another break another break um, then it calls f stat so f stat on one um, it does another end map and then writes out one i will malloc and string copy the flag so this is the right and then we have exit group so um, it took me a long time of messing with this program but one of the things um, I want to do here, so now what I want to do is I want to run it in GDB, right? Just to kind of get a sense for what it does. Um, so we can see it runs, we can run it totally fine. Um, but actually debugging this is a bit of a pain. And so we can actually boot this up and look at the disassembly in Hopper.
So hopper or your favorite disassembler. So this will give us an entry point where it's gonna first call this function and um, hopper doesn't understand that this is code or a procedure. Um, so I think all of this is probably code. Um, so, and this is probably some kind of a procedure. Anyways, I had to play with the, around with this for a while, but it's gonna call in there, it's gonna do stuff. It's um, essentially what we're looking at here is the output of the UPX packer. So one idea would be to look for a UPX unpacker. I'm sure those exist online, run it on here, something that gets that. Uh, the other thing would be if the we know the flag is in memory at some point, well, let's just break point um, somewhere and uh, try to hook that, uh, try to see what the memory looks like at that place to try to find the flag. So one thing we could do here is we could break on write. The problem is that write function is not defined and the packer is actually gonna, somehow this code is encoded in here and it's going to unpack it at runtime. So even us just trying to hook that write function in libc is not going to work but there actually exists a nice way, uh, GDB breakpoint on syscall. We know because we ran it in ftrace, we know that it calls, let's go up. We know that it calls exit group and we know that it calls write. Um, so we can actually um, GDB, and this is actually something I didn't know about GDB until this challenge. And this is why doing CTF and CTF challenges is so fun because you get to learn things as you're um, as you're trying to break these things. So uh, I believe it's uh, catch exit group. Is that right? Let's see, GDB. So always read the help, help catch. Uh, ah, okay, so catch, syscall, exit group. Catch, help, uh, catch, oh, 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 I misspelled it. Spelling, okay, good, so now we have a catch point, so now we'll break when it calls exit group. So now here we are, we've broken right before the program's about to exit which presumably means that the flag is somewhere in memory. Um, so what's the, so GDB has this find command to look through memory, but we kind of have to already know what we're looking for. So one nice thing that we can use is we can um, create a core, create a core dump. So a core dump writes out the current state of memory, registers everything so that you can debug it later. Um, the good news for us, uh, File mem exit. Yes, I want you to make a core dump. Uh, GDB create core dump. So there's a way to do this. Um, dump. Oh, interesting. Huh. Interesting, so you can just write out raw. Oh, I did not know that. See, that could come in handy. Um, ah, generate core file, there we go. So we can do, learn more about it. Gen help generate core file, save a core file. So we could do generate core file, um, flag core. Can't do that without a process to debug. Uh, let's generate this core file. There we go. Okay. And now if I run file on flag core, I will see that it is a, um, interesting. So it's an L64 bit core file. So now at this point, the binary has been unpacked. So I could look at the main file and try to read what's going on but I know that I'm just trying to get some strings out. So if I run strings now on this flag core, I now should get the, the
the output after the UPX unpacker steps in. Um, so we can see, hey, there's core, there's flag. Uh, this sounds like a delivery service. I will something. And we can see we get a bunch of junk in here. So one of the things to do is presumably we can use our knowledge that all of the other flags have been pretty long. Um, so I can maybe set it to, uh, it seems not enough, 13. Uh, maybe 15 would give us some nice, ah, there we go. So what I would start doing is start trying things as flags. So the first thing I actually think is this sounds like a delivery service. This looks like the flag, right? So you'd try this, you'd find out that it failed. It would be very annoying and you'd look through more and you'd look for more and more things and more flags, but you'd actually see this UPX dot, dot, dot question mark sounds like a delivery service and that actually looks more like the flag because that actually makes sense. So we put that in and we should see that this is the flag and we should be very, very happy at this point. Um, so this was uh, a really interesting challenge. It got me to learn about how to break point on system calls in, uh, in GDB and how to use GDB for all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, it's fun to always play with these unpackers because they make you learn more things about how these tools work. So there you go. This is how you break the flag challenge of Ponables.kr. See you folks later.